Greetings. Today we're going to talk about expressions and operators. So we're going to begin by looking at numbers. And I always like to point out, this is not a math class. So today, in this video, we're going to do a couple minutes of math just to explain how these symbols work in Python. It's nothing we haven't seen from sort of basic math classes, um, but we're not going to be doing math computations for the rest of the semester. This is really our only exploration of what these symbols do, is we use them occasionally, but it won't be to do math calculations. That's what calculators are for. Like I said, we do have to look at a couple features, though. So I want you to recall that we have two kinds of numbers in Python. We have ints, which are basically every number from negative very, very low to positive very, very big, but no decimals. And then we have floats, which can be any number with a decimal. And in the basic Python we deal with, those are the only two numbers we need to really consider. We are able to do math operations with each kind of number. So in Python, these are the symbols that you're used to, um, some of them from math, for example. These, these three are probably similar, maybe not so much the asterisks for multiplication, but they're kind of what you would expect. And these do essentially what you're used to. So I would say that probably everything from here upward are kind of what you're, you would expect. So 7 plus 3, you get 10. 7 times 3, you get 21, for example. So we'll look at these next three at the bottom in just a second. If we do the same thing with floats or real numbers, again, these first four operate as you would expect. 7.0 plus 3.0 gives you 10.0, and so on. Okay, so I would say the first four, including division, you could just kind of consider what you're most familiar with. Now let's look at a couple general rules about how numbers work in Python. So basically, if we have 4 plus 3, you get 7. And 4 times 3, you get 12. So notice that it's an int plus an int is an int. An int times an int is an int. Okay, that's kind of a rule. So you might imagine that floats are the same way. If we have 4.0 plus 3.0, we end up getting 7.0. So the general rule is that if you have an int and you add an int, or you have a float and you add a float, um, you're going to get the same type. And so this general rule applies to plus, subtraction, um, explicitly, and multiplication. Okay. So these are the general rules for those symbols. Now, what happens when we have two kinds, an int and a float, and we, uh, we do operations with them together? Well. If you have an int plus a float, you get a float. If you have an int times a float, you get a float. And the order doesn't matter. Flip the order, it, it's all the same. So basically, the general rule is that if you're doing plus, minus, multiplication, right, and you do an operation with an int and a float, you're always going to get a float. And if you want to think about this um, in terms of why is this the way, why it's designed, um, you can think of it like, I like to think of it like a bucket. So the int bucket, right, is about this big because it can hold every number that's got a, uh, doesn't have a decimal point. But then the float bucket is significantly bigger because it's every, bu every number plus those with decimals. So that's kind of a fuzzy argument you can take to say, okay, well, that's why an int plus a float is going to get bigger because it needs a bigger container. So that's one reason why we would operate it this way. Okay, now what about division? So here's where we, we have to start paying attention a little bit more because things get a little different. So I just gave a rule a moment ago, but notice now if we do an int divided by an int, this is division. Okay. An int divided by an int, uh, you get a float. That's kind of odd, right? We would expect an int. Okay, well, what about this? Well, what is, what is this? This kind of looks like division, but it's different. If we do it that way, we actually do get an int. So what's, what's going on here? Well, in Python, we actually have two kinds of division. Um, not, other, not other languages have the same structure as Python does. Uh, sometimes you have these operations with commands or functions, but in Python, it's actually set up just like this. So we have what's called true division. This is basically the division that you have mostly used in any course you've taken, any, any math course, grade school, high school, 
college, right? When you do division, you're going to get uh, the result being a float. So notice that no matter what the input is over here, you always get a float. So five divided by, 10 divided by five, well, we know as humans that it's two. But by the rule, division, you're going to get a float. You're going to get a decimal, right? Um, 99 divided by 100.0, well, because we have a float in the operation and we're doing division, we automatically get that decimal point, okay? Now, true division. This is the one that's a little bit different that you might, you've seen before, but maybe not in this context. So what true division is, is it's two slashes, and it essentially truncates, which is another way to think of, truncate means to throw away. Um, you could think of it as rounding down if you want, but it's really just getting rid of it. And so the one that we're most concerned about in this course is this first one, okay? The other ones are great, they do apply, but they can get a little bit confusing. So we're gonna focus on this idea of an int, true divided by another int will give you an int. So this is kind of a strange rule, but let's look at this. 10 divided by integer division five. Well, we get two. Well, that, that kind of makes sense, right? Four integer division three, well, we get, we get one. So not 1.33, the decimal was removed. 99 to integer division 100, we get zero. Notice that it's not rounded up, it's truncated, which is like rounding down. So this is just how many times, another way to think of it is how many times does the number go into another number evenly with no remainder, basically. Which leads us to the modulo. Now this is the one that you're probably most unfamiliar with. Modulo or modulus or mod is basically the remainder. So if you look at 14 divided by four, you're going to get three with a remainder of two. And so just really quick to think about that, right? If you were to, to go back to grade school um, and you said, okay, well, I've got four and I've got 14, right? Four divided by 14. Well, we know that four goes into 14 three times evenly, right? This is, and you would have done this math and you said, okay, my remainder is two. So I would say three R two. Well, that's it. So this three, that's your slash slash, that's your inner division. And your two, that's your modulus. So it's basically what you would have done in, in school before you, we learned about fractions and decimals. You just have the remainder. So sometimes it's useful for us to know how many times does the number go into something evenly, which would be three, and then what's the, what's the partial left over? And that's what two is gonna give you. This is really, really useful to determine if a number is odd or even, right? It's also really useful to determine if an integer is evenly divisible by another integer. So that's why these operations are useful. They seem, they seem strange, but you actually seen them in different ways. We're just presenting them outside of the fractions and division, which is showing you it's the remainder. That's all it is. A couple other small points. Um, we operate with these sort of arithmetic symbols. We operate in pairs. So when you see one plus two plus three plus four, what Python is actually going to do is it's going to do these, and then it's going to do these, and then it's going to do these. So it's gonna operate in, in a sequence like that. Uh, you may remember PEMDAS, right? I'll see if anybody remembers PEMDAS. And so it stands for parentheses, exponent, multiplication, division, addition, and subtraction. It's just the order that Python is going to do operations. So it means it's gonna do parentheses first, then it's gonna do multiplication and division, then it's gonna do addition and subtraction. That's just how it's gonna evaluate this. Why do we need to know this? Well, because when we see an expression like this, for example, we just need to know what's Python gonna do because Python's gonna follow its rules. So we're just understanding it ahead of time what's gonna happen. If you wanna break those rules, you can easily put parentheses in, in different places. Okay. Um, this is just the, a more formal way of looking at all the, all the operators. By the way, uh, if you are familiar with other languages and you're familiar with symbols like plus plus or minus minus, 
those do not exist in Python. So we, we don't use those. So they don't, they're not an option, just to be to let you know. Also of note is the exponent. We might not use it very often, but it is it's there if you need to. So this would be the equivalent of a to the b power. That's what star star means. Okay. And finally, uh, this is just for your reference. Uh, there's a special symbol, which is when you put the arithmetic symbol and the equal sign together. And you'll see this in the notes. You might sometimes see this online. Um, it's just a shortcut. It's nothing special. If it confuses you, don't use it. But all it's saying is, if I want to write amount equals amount times 2, which would mean take the value of amount, multiply it by 2, and store it back in amount, if I want a shortcut, I can simply write amount times equals 2. That's it. Just a shortcut. And on this applies to all the other symbols as well. So you could do it with minus, mod, division, etc.